I'm going to make a stop at a solar farm. We are installing or have installed native vegetation, uh, pollinator habitat in particular. So native bunch grasses and native wildflowers. And we're gonna go take a look at that. I'm hoping to get up some back roads into the national forest here and find some interesting plants, maybe some rare ones. Um, so we're gonna see how the ID4 does on this trip. I am at 75% charge. It's uh, gonna be kind of a long, a long journey here, long day trip. This is kind of overlooking the Bear Creek Valley that the city of Ashland is in. ID4 is doing great up this road. No problem whatsoever. This is a steep grade. Averaging about three miles per kilowatt hour right now, so that's dropping as we go up this hill. It'll be interesting to check in when we go back down the other side of the pass or when we come back down this side later today. See what the regen braking does. Just beautiful up here. around these corners. I know a lot of people would think this car, the ID4, is kind of on the boring end, but to me, it handles great. It's quick up the hill. Uh, the regen braking and everything is, is just fantastic. I, I love driving this car on roads like this. And we've transitioned more into a Douglas fir, ponderosa pine ecosystem here. So this is the solar farm that we've been working on for a couple years now. This generates, oh, I can't remember, something like eight megawatts of electricity, or you know, peak, peak generation. And uh, this used to be ag land prior to having this facility built. And now we are managing it for two objectives, one, the generation of electricity, obviously, and two, native plant and pollinator habitat. And I am here in August, and it is crispy. It's late season, but I wanted to at least give you a sense of the vegetation we've got here. There's some weeds for sure. Don't judge us too harshly. This is a native lupin, Lupinus argentius. There's Buddy. Buddy's looking for shade. It's kind of getting hot. That's Lupinus argentius, the yarrow, obviously Achillea millifolium. This is Grindelia nana. This is Idaho gumweed. Little bees. I don't know if you can see them, but the little bees just love this one. But yeah, we seeded this on the site maybe about, well, I want to say, Four years ago, five years ago, something like that. 
I think it's just naturally occurring out here too. But this, we try to get as close as possible to the native vegetation. And this rubber rabbit brush, this is Erica Marianaziosa. This is just coming back in on its own. And I don't, it might even be a problem for the site eventually, but we'll see. I kind of like it. This uh, pasture grass is mostly what was here before we started this. I think it maybe it was a cattle pasture or something. But this is Elipicurus pretensis, meadow foxtail. Oh, there's some uh, Idaho fescue. Astuca idahoensis. All in all, though, I think the site is looking pretty good. This is a species of tragopogon, which is uh, a weed. We don't want that one here, but I don't know. It's just kind of natural. It's just not that bad. This one's cool. This is an evening primrose. This is just here. We didn't seed this. This just came in, and it's becoming more common. I think this is... Uh, Taraxia tanacetifolia, or tansy leaf evening primrose, something like that. This is cool. We did not see this as another one that's just coming in, but it's one of our rare rhizomatous, kind of aggressive rhizomatous uh, native grasses. It's uh, Elemis triticoides. Cool and I like that one. Here's Oregon Sunshine that's kind of past its prime. This is Areophila monatum. It's kind of everywhere in our area, but it's going to seed now. And we come out here and actually collect seed off of these to put on other sites. So this is the time to do it. Let me see if I can get any seed to come out of here. Okay, yeah, so there's seeds in there if you can see the little black ones kind of mixed in with the chaff. Those are the Oregon sunshine seeds. That just came off of one of these flower heads. So that's a huge resource for us, being able to come out here and collect those. It's one of the inverters. I think it's an inverter. I don't know. I don't really know what they do. It's kind of cool. I mean, I like natural areas as much as anybody, but it's kind of cool to be out here at a site where we're generating solar electricity and we have all these native plants. Here's a native buckwheat, an areogonum, areogonum umbilatum. Again, it's kind of going to seed now. It's past its prime. I'll come out here next year and get a video when things are full bloom. There's some Oregon sunshine. Areophyllum linatum, still flowering. Here's another native bunch grass that we seeded out here. This is squirrel tail or Elemis elamoides. This is a great one. It tends to compete the exotic annuals that we worry about, cheatgrass and medusa head and betonata. This guy's going to seed, but I don't know if you can see that. This is a really cool one that we tried to establish here. Seems to be popping up more and more. This is a Sedalcia, Sedalcia oregana. Could be Sedalcia maliflora, I'm not positive actually. Here's a Penstemon. I might, I'm gonna have to key this out because I forgot what species it is off the top of my head. But this is another one. I don't think we seeded this. It's just beautiful. Bumblebees love it. It's past its prime now. It's mostly going to seed at this point, but right here in the road, I'm just walking this gravel road and we have all kinds of native plants coming in. This is actually the main bunch grass that grows out here. And this is definitely going to seed. This is just such a beautiful grass though. This is uh, Sandberg's bluegrass, Poa secunda, Again, time to collect seed from that guy. And come out here and get pounds of seed pretty easily. But what I wanted to show you was this other site that we don't manage. 
it's next door. I'm just gonna have to try and get a shot through the fence here. But that is a site that is not managed for native plants, but otherwise is on the same soil, pretty much uh, used for the same purposes. Looks like it's got a strip of alfalfa that's flowering right now. So actually <laughs> pollinators are using it. I see some butterflies in there. I can't tell what kind right now, but um, it is being used by some pollinators, but on the other side of the other fence where the panels start, it looks like it's alfalfa and that uh, meadow foxtail. So two non-native species that are just being mowed several times a year, not providing any particular habitat for native plants or pollinators, which is fine. I'm not like judging it or anything, but uh, just showing the contrast, you know, with this which may not look like much, but uh, buddy, did you find some shade? But this is pretty great habitat, especially if I can come out here earlier in the season before everything's dried out. So I'm done at the solar farm and I think I'm going to head out to a rare plant site. Um, not sure what to expect. It's a site I've never been to before, but there's a rare bulrush called Shinoplectus subterminalis that uh, we have an opportunity to monitor. And it's adjacent to Pelican Butte. It's near Pelican Butte in Southwest Oregon. So I don't know what the roads are going to be like. I don't know what the Hiking's gonna be like, I don't know what the plant, I've, I've seen the plant before, but I'm not sure what the site's gonna be like, so. We'll see how it goes and uh, how the ID4 handles whatever roads we come across. Got 46% uh, charge left, and the car estimates 116 miles. Not exactly sure how far I have to go before I get home. So I was wondering if I ought to stop in Klamath Falls. Maybe I'll stop in Klamath Falls and just get a little bit of charge just to feel more comfortable. for me today. Go down a road here. 
Luckily we're within walking distance now. Still drivable. See, this is what I worry about. I don't want to scrape this thing up. There's some Ceanothus velutinus. Snow brush, I guess it is. I don't want to do too much scraping on that. The car doesn't like it. The car is beeping at me. Minimal scraping so far. I don't know. This might be the end of the line for the ID4. I think it might be the end of the line, period. I think the road might end. Yeah, I think that's the end of the road to the ID4. But now I need to kind of bushwhack through this stuff. Again, I've never been here before. I don't know what to expect. It looks like on the map there's some sort of a wetland due south of me right now. So I'm going to try and hike into that. Hopefully this doesn't get too hairy out here. You can kind of see where it opens up. Up here. Just kind of walking due south from the car right now. Oh yeah. Looks like there's a big clearing up here. Might take a little bit of effort to find this sedge. I'm not that familiar with it at this point. Sedge ID is difficult but we'll give it a shot. This is cool. I had no idea what was gonna be up here. Of course, this looks fun to climb through. Gosh, it's just gorgeous. Alrighty, there's some um, Downingia. I don't know what species off the top of my head. I don't know if that's Downingia yaina, potentially. Okay, just getting here for the first time. Looks like at least the margins are dominated by this Deschampsia cespitosa, native bunch grass. Some sort of Juncus, which looks fairly rhizomatous, so maybe. Juncus Balticus. Looks like Spirea, potentially Spirea douglasii around the edges. Gosh, that Daningia is just gorgeous. That's in the Campanulaceae. Look, there's bumblebees just all over it. Gosh, it's just buzzing. Yeah, Campanulaceae is the family here. This is one of the genera in this family that has bilaterally symmetrical flowers. Sort of an ephemeral wetland species, just uh, a vernal spe Although it's August, so it must have had water in it until pretty recently. We're pretty high elevation here. Oh, and Buddy found water, which is good for him. I don't know what that means for me. Wow. Very cool. I don't know how I'm going to navigate in here exactly. I really don't want to walk straight through that. And I don't see our sedge yet. Looks like elk are going through right here. Usually I like to follow elk trails, but it looks like they went straight down into the water. I just don't want, I didn't even wear good shoes for this period. I wore like terrible shoes for this. I don't know what I was thinking. Looking for a subspecies of Carex laziocarpa, which I guess laziocarpa is not a rare species in the world, but the subspecies is rare, at least here in Oregon. And uh, I think our main concern is that it would decline due to climate change. 
drying of these meadows, uh, potentially disturbance from off-road vehicles or something like that, but this meadow does not seem like it's at risk of that guy. Getting my shoes wet. Do not want to get my shoes wet. There's frogs everywhere. Damsel flies. Looks like Pacific chorus frogs. Oh, there's a Carax. I'll have to figure out if that's what we're looking for. I have the key sedges, I don't just know them off the top of my head, so I might look that up and see if that's what we're looking for. Oh yeah, he's happy. How could you not be? This is just fantastic. Just sitting on this log. Breeze is blowing through. Got dragonflies, butterflies, no mosquitoes. I got my feet wet. Had to happen. Or some sort of caterpillar down there. What are you? Some sort of moth? Butterfly? Who knows? It seems to be eating our sedge. Which, by the way, I think is the sedge we're looking for. Yeah, it's Carex lasiocarpa variety americana, which apparently, like in the Midwest, Minnesota, that sort of area, this is a super common sedge. This worldwide is not a, an, an imperiled species. I think it just happens to be rare in Oregon. So that's why we're looking at it. We don't want to see it extirpated from the western U.S., even if it is common elsewhere. Uh, some of the ways that you tell this apart from other sedges are that it has male flowers or staminate flowers at the top of the flowering spike, or I guess the flowering spike at the tip of the stem uh, are male or staminate flowers, and that would be this part. They're already done doing their thing. It's kind of late in the season. They already released their pollen and have kind of died back. The terminal male spike is longer than the other spikes below it, the other male spikes, which it's just hard to see at this phase, but that, that holds true here. And below it, we have female spikes. This one seems to have had, or currently has, two female spikes. They're going to seed currently. Each one of those is a seed, or a fruit, I should say, called an akeem, which is a single seeded fruit. Uh, and that akeem is wrapped, like all sedges, in a sheath called a perigenium. That's that brown sheath around the, the fruit. And the perigenia are subtended if I can get that to focus. Let's get this other leaf in the way here. Perigenia are subtended by another bract, and those bracts are left behind. You can see those papery bracts. They're left behind after the seeds fall out, after the achenes fall out. Um, the sheaths, or the, sorry, the bracts, on this one are supposed to be shorter than the Achaeans or than, than the Paraginia. So that holds true here. The Achaeans are three-sided. Let me see if I can get a good shot of that. Most sedges are either two-sided or three-sided. So we call that, well, two-sided is lenticular. But these are not lenticular. These are three-sided hard to see it. They're tiny, so it's hard to see it. But uh, they're not flat, lens-shaped things. They're, they're three-dimensional, three-sided things. So that holds up. Um, also, they have this leaf-like bract below the female spikes. And they are super long. They're longer than I guess both spikes, the male and female spikes, are super long. It's like the tallest part of the plant. So that holds up. 
Um, I think that's what we're looking at here. I think this is Carex lazio-carpa, subspecies Americana. Uh, what I'm going to do is map the extent of this and take some notes about how the population is doing. And so we can track it over time and make sure that this thing isn't declining. This meadow isn't declining due to climate change and drought. This is just fantastic. I, I'm glad I came here. <laughs> I didn't even know about this. If you want to know more about our rare plant mapping, go to the understoryinitiative.org. Hopefully you can uh, join me for quite a few more of these. All right, I give up. I'm in the water. I had no idea there would be this much water here. I took the plunge. It's bound to happen. I don't know what I was thinking wearing these shoes. I just don't want to fall into any mud holes now. It's happened to me before, and I don't intend to do it while I'm out here by myself. I don't think Buddy would get me out of here. Oh. Mucky. It's mucky warm water. Look at that. The elk are just going right through the middle of the water. You can clearly see their trail. So yeah, I don't know the other sedges here. I'm not sure I'm willing to get in this pond any more than this. Uh, and I'm not sure how to figure out how much of this is Carex lesiocarpa, but I guess I'll just try and go around the perimeter. I can't tell like, if any of that in there is, is our target species. Well, I'll do my best. Chorus frogs just everywhere. Just, I don't know if you can see that, but hundreds of them out here. Some sort of, this is some sort of Senecio. I don't know what kind. I would, in a habitat like this, I would have said maybe Hydrophyloides, but it just doesn't look like that to me. I don't have time to key anything out right now, so I'll just put the name of it on the screen. I walked all the way around the meadow. Seems like most of the Carex Lazio-Carpa is on the other side. Not really seeing it so much on this side. I'm not willing to wade back and forth through it. I cannot remember what this is. I'll put the name of it right below, but is that like a Lismataceae or what? Gotta be a Lispitaceae, right? Yeah, it seems to be connected to that leaf. I will figure out what that is and I will put the name on the video. Well, that was a short visit, but well worth it. That was amazing. What is this? Looks like uh, Navaretti uh, Intertexta. Pincushion plant. This is probably our most common Navaretia. Oh, there's some camas. Right around the edge of the meadow. It's starting to ripen its fruit. That's Camasia quamash. Oh, it's some uh, Danthonia. Probably Danthonia californica, almost for sure. California oak grass. Nice to see all these native plants. Ooh, here's a Tritilea. Tritilea hyacinthina, sometimes called fool's onion. It's got a edible bulb on it, but doesn't taste like an onion. Tastes more like a water chestnut or something. Still really good. But if you're hoping for an onion, you're a fool. Here's some goldenrod. It's got a crab spider on it. It's a solid ego of some kind. I don't know. I would uh, guess Elongata. Ooh. It's a gallium. One of the bed straws. That is a uh, gallium borealis? Boreal? You can correct me if you want. I gotta find my way through this again. I know the car's not very far away, but 
It's a lot of down wood. Looks like some uh, Engelman spruce. Hopefully I know where I'm going. I don't think I see the road. Just some gorgeous trees out here. Douglas fir, no, white fir, Abe's con color, I guess hybridized with uh, Abe's grandis in this area. Looks like a uh, sugar pine, one of my favorites. We saw Engelman spruce. There's the car. Pretty close to where I left it. Okay, let's see how we do getting out of here. Okay, I gotta head back down this semi-sketchy road. The car's freaking out again. It's okay. It'll be fine. It's fine. I'm not worried about it. Uh, I have 22% battery left. Car estimates 53 miles, which is honestly about how far I have to go. But this is how it goes driving around in the middle of nowhere in an EV. Okay, I'm about to get back on the highway. Car says I have 60 miles of range. I have 59 miles to go. It's gonna be interesting. Not bad. 